My name is Sierra Flores and I am the Everyday Educator. Today I'm going to teach you how to create a virtual Bitmoji classroom. And not only that, I'm going to teach you how to turn yourself into an animated GIF. If you are new here, hi, hello, and welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't ever miss a video. And if you're returning, thank you so much. I like you too. Now, without further ado, let's get into this video. Create your own virtual Bitmoji classroom. I'm also gonna teach you how to create a GIF just like the one you see here. So I wanna show you first, this is a room that I created online. It's my virtual learning room. And so with this, you see my Bitmoji and I have a window with the view. And I even added a personal photo to give it that touch of home. And so another room that I created is this one. And you'll see that I have decorations, I have flexible seating in my classroom. And then I also have some anchor charts on the wall. And of course, my Bitmoji. And so, to do that, you're going to have to do some pre-work beforehand. And so these tips are going to help make it a lot easier whenever you go to plan and create your virtual learning space. So first, you need a Bitmoji to have a Bitmoji classroom. So you are going to download the Bitmoji app to your phone. Um, you can do it online, but it's a lot easier if you do it on your phone. So I definitely recommend doing that. Next, you are going to download the Bitmoji extension to your laptop. And so you need to be browsing in Google Chrome in order to um, download that extension. So make sure that you're in Google Chrome. Last, you are going to want to go through and choose what are the options that I can work with. And so before I even created my Bitmoji classroom, I kind of went shopping, if you will. So I have my wall floor background options. These are my classroom furniture options that I can choose from. I have decor, and then I have Bitmoji poses. And so what I want to encourage you to do is to go shopping beforehand. So that way, whenever you create your classroom, it's gonna be a breeze, because I'm telling you, I didn't do this the first time, but it took me so long. I'm talking longer than an hour to create one slide because I kept choosing, do I want this? No, I want the other one. Oh, but what about that table? Oh, that's too big. Go ahead and go shopping beforehand so that that way it's gonna cut down on time and you'll be able to create this Bitmoji classroom seamlessly. So. I'm going to show you how to actually start creating that classroom. And so these are the common questions that I got. How did you make a photo fit in that frame? How do you make the background transparent? And how do you arrange images in front or back? And then last, I'm going to show you how to actually create that GIF. And so from this, I want to teach you about your what or your um, wall floor background options. And so to get these, I opened up a new tab and I typed in wall, floor, background. Now, there is another way to do this. You can go back into your virtual classroom. You can press um, insert image, and you're going to search the web, and you're going to type in that same term, wall, floor, background. And then you're going to get images here of wall floor backgrounds that you can choose from. Now, the reason why I decided to go to an open Google search is because I didn't like the ones that popped up and the search within Google Slides. So one quick thing, you do not want to choose images that are not free. And so I'm going to teach you this quick trick so that you do not get in, in any trouble at all for um, infringing on someone's copyrighted materials. So you're going to go to tools, then you will go to usage rights, and you are going to click labeled for reuse with modification. You need to choose this one because if you want to crop the image, if you need to change anything about it, you're free and allowed to do so. So I'm going to select this option and you'll see that uh, my selection, it drastically changed. And so now these are the free options. So then you'll go through and you will choose which free option you want to use. And so I copied my options and then I pasted them in here. 
And so I'm gonna choose which one of these I want now so that I can begin to build my classroom. One thing that you could do is to copy and then you can go down to your clean slide and paste it in. Let me get rid of this. You can copy and you can paste that image in. This is the way some people do it. I personally don't like doing it that way because this image, after I size it, it can move. And if I accidentally click it the wrong way, I can move it and move it. So what I prefer to do is to save the image to my computer, go background, and then I'm going to upload from my computer. And so I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So here it is and I'm done. And so now, no matter how many times I click, this background is not moving, it is not going anywhere. So I have my wall floor background that's set ready to go. Now, um, to search for these materials, the way that I did it, I went into my um, search here and I typed in transparent and then whatever image I need. So for me, if I needed a bookshelf, transparent bookshelf and so that way whenever i find something i like i can drag it over and you see that it is clear it has like a clear background to it you see so that's how you find what you want you type in transparent um you can do transparent desk you can do transparent sofa anything you want come over here transparent and get it and then you can go here as well to an open Google search, transparent rug, but make sure that your options are changed here, labeled for reuse with modification. Do not get caught up in some copyright infringement craziness. So back to the slides. This shopping is what I did beforehand and everything that I found that I liked, I copied it and I, put it into my organized slides. And so if I like this couch, I would drag it over and keep this couch here for me so that that way I might wanna use it now, I might not wanna use it now, doesn't matter. I have it saved and I can come right back to it if I need to. So now that I have that set up, I can easily just copy and go down to my classroom and just paste it in and then I can arrange that, size it however I want to, however big or however small I want to. And there we go, I have my couch, which actually that blends right into the background. So I'm not gonna use that couch. And this brings me actually to my next point. I found a couch that I liked, but it was not transparent. And you see I'm pasting it in, it looks horrendous. I can't put this image in. So whenever you run into this situation, you find an image you like, but it has a background on it, you're gonna go, go to a website that's called, that's called remove.bg. And for that, you are going to upload an image. And so I'm gonna go back to my downloads and I'm gonna grab that couch. And now you see here, removing background, it's working, it's working. There, my background is now removed. So now I'm gonna download this image back into my virtual classroom. I'm going to insert image and I'm actually gonna upload this from my computer. And again, that's housed in my downloads. And here you'll see that it says removed or remove BG preview, remove BG background. So I'm gonna click that. And now you see that I have my couch with a removed background and this one actually looks a lot better in my classroom. So I'm gonna get rid of that one and stick with this one right here. Now, that is how I can remove the background and make it transparent. How did you make your photo fit in that frame? Okay, I'm gonna copy this frame and I'm going to paste it here. I'm gonna put it right on the wall. And so now I'm going to go insert image and I'm gonna upload it from my computer. Um, I'm gonna make it a selfie. I'm just gonna be really selfish here and just put, make this room all about me. So here's my image and I'm making this giant so that you can see it. All right, 
So it obviously does not fit very well. So I can try to manipulate this, but I mean, it just doesn't fit. So I'm going to stretch that a little bit. It kind of looks weird. So I'm going to double click it. And you see how it's black now. I can cut this to make it smaller. All right. And so that image looks a little bit better now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to right click and order. Now I'm going to send this backward. And so now it fits perfectly inside the frame. And that works for any other thing too. So let's say that I decided I want to put this lamp in. Well, I'm going to copy this lamp, bring it down to my living room or my classroom, whatever. And I'm going to paste in this lamp. And let's see that I want it behind the couch. I'm going to right click that lamp, order it, and I'm going to send it backward. Okay, try that again. Send it to the back. There we go. And I'm gonna, this has a line around it. I don't like that line. So I'm going to make that line transparent. Now it goes away. All right, cool. So now I have a lamp that is in the background and I can move it actually over here. I prefer it on that side. Okay, there we go. Arrange your images in the front of the back or the back. So I actually have a window here. And so in my classroom, I do want to have a window. And so I'm going to take that over here, make it big. And I also want to put um, a scenery there because I don't want to be looking at the wall. So I'm going to put outdoor scene and let's see what pops up. That's actually beautiful. I'm going to grab this one, dragging it over. Oh my goodness, it is monstrous. But that would make for a nice background if I wanted to turn this into um, a scene. I could add my Bitmoji into this background, which actually I really like this background. All right, I'm going to make it tiny. Ugh, not tiny enough. Double click, and I'm going to cut this down just a little bit try to size it in there as best i can all right looking good and i'm gonna stretch it okay looks good now i'm gonna order it same type deal as last time with the photo frame and with the lamp i'm gonna right click order i'm gonna send it all the way to the back and there we go. You see, now I'm looking outside at this awesome tree. Okay. And so these little tricks are what you are going to use as you are creating your own classroom. And so for me, for example, whenever I put my Bitmoji in initially, she was standing on the table. And so I clicked, I right clicked and I moved her order so that that way I could bring her to the front, to the back all the way back, all the way forward. And so you have to rearrange them to make them fit in. Now the part that you've been waiting for, how to turn yourself into a GIF. So what you will do is first, you are going to download the app to your phone called Boomerang. And so you are gonna go ahead and snap a quick Boomerang. And then after you snap your Boomerang, you are going to save it and airdrop it if you have a MacBook. If you have any other type of computer, you are going to email yourself that boomerang, all right? So after you email yourself the boomerang or you airdrop it, you are going to download it and save it on your computer. After you have that boomerang saved, you're gonna go to the website unscreen.com, unscreen.com. You are going to upload your clip and here is mine right here. And then you're going to go through the process of allowing this to upload. All right. And then as soon as it uploads, you will be prompted to download it and save it to your computer. And so in the interest of time, I have already pre-downloaded my boomerang. And so I'm going to take it and I'm going to insert this boomerang this way. I'm going to upload it from computer. And then I am going, you can do it here. 
You see here it says boomerang unscreen. I'm going to click that and then I'm going to resize it just like this. Resize, resize. There we go. And now I have generated a boomerang of me waving at you and telling you to subscribe to my channel. If this video helped you in any way, please click like, comment, you can share it with your teaching buddies, and definitely don't forget to subscribe.